Alright, so uh, my name is Richard Bob Camp, and this is the 2010 Rockies Geology uh, Field Study Final Project. Uh, the topic of my final project is uh, Yellowstone's hotspot, as well as uh, supervolcanoes and the eruptions uh, that they experience. Uh, before we actually launch into any of the discussion on uh, Yellowstone or supervolcanoes, I just want to touch base on three uh, specific um, key definitions, I guess, um, jargon alerts. Uh, the first of which is a supervolcano. Uh, the loose definition of a supervolcano, granted the unofficial definition of a supervolcano, is any volcano that uh, erupts and produces an ejecta greater than 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles. Uh, these supervolcanoes usually occur when magma, uh, magma chambers on the surface, um, are unable to break through and over time they continue to grow in size as well as to increase the pressures that they're under um, and then finally this, the, the surface crust above them um, collapses and, are, and breaks, you know, basically breaks and, and they explode. These are usually incredibly explosive eruptions. Um, typically they, for I guess for in, you know, in, in the case of Yellowstone specifically, there was a composite or complex volcano uh, like cone over top some of this uh, hot spot before it erupted. Um, these types of volcanic eruptions, the, the super volcanoes, are usually seen in convergent boundary, uh, convergent plate boundary zones, uh, as well as continental uh, hotspots. The convergent plate boundary zone, a really good example would be the super volcano eruption of uh, Toba. And then for the continental hotspots, the perfect example is, uh, of course, Yellowstone. Um, also, the term mega caldera, um, in reference to supervolcanoes, is used for any uh, volcano or caldera um, exhibiting of supervolcano characteristics. Now, a caldera is a cauldron-like uh, volcanic feature. Um, it's usually caused by the collapse of land. Uh, that exists over top of the volcano um, as it explodes and um, as the explosion occurs the land then collapses in on the voided uh, magma chamber below. Um, the two absolutely perfect and incredibly well studied examples of this is of course Yellowstone as well as uh, Glencoe in Scotland and the Grampian uh, Mountains of Scotland. Um, the other thing I want to actually talk about, um, the other term, I guess, is the VEI, which is the Volcanic Explosivity Index. The highest it goes to is 8, and the lowest, of course, is 0. Um, a VEI of 8 is considered a super colossal or megal colossal eruption, uh, of course, ejecting more than 1,000 a, a cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles. Um, and the VEIs of 7 and 8 are, are termed usually colossals or megalocolossals, um, and they're so powerful in their explosivity when they erupt that they form circular calderas um, instead of the cones to, you know, typically associated with volcanoes. Um, just so you guys get a good idea of, of, of VEI um, kind of index, I guess, um, Mountain St. Helens in 1980 was uh, rated at a lower end of VE5, while Pinatubo and Krakatoa were both VEs of 6. Um, the other key thing to know about uh, a VEI scale is that, let's say from a 2 to a 3, it's a magnitude factor of 10 increase. So a 3 is 10 times stronger than a 2. Um, that's a key thing to learn. And here's a really good picture of the VEI explosivity index. Don't know if you all can read that, but it's as close as I can get it. This big circle right here is a VEI of 7, and that's Tambora in 1885 with 100 cu uh, cubic kilometers of ejecta. The smaller little one right here on top of that is a Pinatubo in 1991 with a VE of uh, 6, with so like 10 cubic kilometers of ejecta. And here's a tiny little one, 1 cubic kilometer, 1.2 cubic kilometers, um, not in St. Helens, in May 18th, 1980. So that's kind of a key thing. The other good little graphic to look at is this Yellowstone. This is the perfect example of the Yellowstone caldera as it's going on right now. You have the overall hot spot in the upper mantle um, and the main heat source right down here and then you have the um, specific magma hot spot coming up right under Yellowstone rising up out of the, the, uh, the upper mantle. 
Now, these earthquakes, of course, are going on all over here. Yellowstone has about 3,000, uh, averages about 3,000 per year. And then here you have the caldera as it fell in um, in the last eruption uh, 640,000 years ago, actually. Um, the other key thing to know about Yellowstone, and I'll get to this later, but I just figured I'd mention it now, is that it's also called a resurgent dome caldera, where this magma is continuing to rise, and so you're getting um, small domes rising up from the surface of the caldera uh, floor, actually. So that's kind of a key thing. Remember that for later, guys. Now, I'm going to pause this for two seconds and come show you guys something really quick. This is all Montana up here, and then this is, uh, I'm sorry, Idaho over here, Montana up here, and Wyoming over here. This zone right over here is the current area of the park. Of course, uh, modern park boundaries go a little bit into both Idaho and Montana. Now, if you look closely, these five different uh, colorations that I put here, uh, silver, green, blue, gold, and copper, um, represent the past 6.4 million years of the basic or general locations of where uh, the Yellowstone hotspot and caldera have been erupting. Um, you have these, which is 640,000 years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 2.1 million years ago, which of course are the... Um, Mesa Falls, Huckleberry Ridge, and that third one I can't remember right now. Um, <laughs> now the other thing is, you can see the mountain ranges and the plains of Montana and Wyoming over here, and plains of Idaho. Um, this is the current theory, simplified current theory, of um, some of the arguments going on with the U inside the USGS as well inside some of the... Um, Yellowstone Volcanic Observatories and whatnot. Um, scientists right now can't quite agree on whether or not um, Yellowstone is being heated by a deep plume or by a shallow plume. Um, from the top of this to the bottom uh, is 1,700 miles and it goes into the upper mantle um, of the Earth. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is where the Yellowstone hotspot would be erupting um, right now up top where you see this. But these are the convection layers, or convection circulations uh, within the Earth, and the direction of the magma um, in both the shallow plume and the deep plume theories. Um, basically, the, the arguments are that there's enough evidence um, that have been gathered by you know, different scientific experiments and different scientific research uh, expeditions, I suppose, that, uh, that they can't quite agree on which one's which and which better fits um, the Yellowstone um, I guess symptoms and signs of what's going on there. All right. Uh, now, as I may or may not have mentioned, um, the interesting, one of the really interesting things about Yellowstone is that it erupts both rhyolitic and basaltic um, lag lava and magma. Um, so, if we look right here, you can actually see an example of uh, basalt. Got those flow lines right there, and then also a good example of columnar basalt over here. Get a little video of that. You can also see kind of rectangular, lots of different angles and whatnot. Uh, this is rhyolite, uh, porphyritic rhyolite over here. Zoom in and see those different grains. Uh, so we would also be seeing this type of rock out of uh, out of a Yellowstone eruption. Now, as well as that, we are going to see a volcanic flow. If you can see the different delineations and then bedding, I guess. Well, not bedding, but different flow marks there, different layers. Um, we'd also see volcanic ash. Really, really good example of the different layerings of uh, of the volcanic ash as it is deposited. Um, there's a chance you might see some obsidian. And for the record, and for the record, that was not, not taken out of Yellowstone National Park, because as we all know, that would be a federal crime. So, disclaimer, um, you might also see some gabbro, um, but I'm not quite sure about that. 
So, um, just going over some of what might occur at Yellowstone if it were to erupt again. Um, the most likely eruption would be um, hydrothermally or geothermally related, of course, with the different um, hot springs and whatnot that we normally see erupting there every day and, and all that. Um, the, the most likely type of volcanic eruption, however, would be uh, lava flows of either rhyolite or basalt. Um, these would be similar to the 80 different um, rhyolitic uh, eruptions that have occurred in the past 150,000 years at Yellowstone. Um, we'd see a lot, uh, significant actually, volumes of volcanic ash and pumice uh, in those kind of standard volcanic eruptions that would probably occur at Yellowstone if it were to erupt again right now. Now, um, those normal eruptions will also include, uh, obviously, explosive phases due to the different composition of the magma and the lava and the situation at Yellowstone. The least likely but absolutely catastrophic event would be, obviously, a super eruption of the uh, mega caldera, so another super volcano basically going off. Um, those would be uh, an explosive caldera forming eruption in that case. Now, we are going to be looking at a couple of uh, images that I've picked up, as well as uh, one of the pictures I took. If we look at this, this is the Sour Creek uh, Resurgent Dome, actually. Um, you can kind of see it right along here, that dome where the trees are growing up. That is actually one of the two big resurgent domes that are occurring in Yellowstone um, in modern times. Now, stepping backwards... Uh, if you see this, um, this is currently uh, a map of the three um, calderas of Yellowstone. Uh, you have the middle darker one as the modern caldera from 640,000 years ago. This overall larger one is from 2.1 million years ago. And this small one over here is the one from the uh, second Yellowstone big eruption 1.3 million years ago. Now, these two little thing guys, these little two green guys right there and right there are the resurgent domes in the park. Um, and this is actually the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome that I just showed you a picture of. Now, this is a map, a geological map from a satellite of 2007 to 2004 to 2007, the Yellowstone Caldera, as well as... Um, they were mapping uh, uplift features, actually, and if you notice, here are the two uplift resurgent domes, and there's uh, Sour Creek over there, and look at the movement upwards. Blue is up, and red is side-to-side -side horizontal. Blue would be vertical. Um, of the different um, GPS, I guess, markers that they were using at Yellowstone at the time.